Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to look at communicating with your family should a natural disaster strike. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So if you watched the last video, you'll know that one of the things that inspired me to become a ham was a massive EF4 tornado that passed within a thousand yards of my home roughly 10 years ago. So following up on that, today I wanted to talk about a family communications plan. Uh, it's something that I came up with uh, after that tornado came through the area. Now it happened that day that me and my wife were both at home, uh, so it wasn't something that I had to be concerned with. Uh, but had we not been together, that could have been a, a real issue since cell phones were out. So a family communication plan can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Now, one of the things that was working to my favor is we don't have small children. All of our children are grown and actually live on their own. If you have small children, it's definitely going to make the plan a bit more complex. But you definitely need to put one of these together so that should something happen, you and your family know how you're going to communicate with one another, or at least have a meeting place where you know everyone is going to gather up. Now, as part of this plan, I have assembled uh, mobile communications kits, uh, and I've done a video on that in the past. It's helpful on a day-to-day -day basis because it does include things like uh, cell phone chargers, uh, various cables, charging cables that you might need, and things like that. I use that actually quite a bit, uh, just on a day-to-day -day basis. Somebody jumps in my car, they forgot their charger, I happen to have the right cable available and a battery bank that I can help charge your phone. But should a disaster strike, it's something that you want to have available. So I'll leave a link to this video that I've done in the past right up in the corner, and you guys can check that out as well and see what all I've put in it. It doesn't have to be as all-encompassing as mine, but at least maybe it'll get you to thinking about your own mobile go kit. Something else I've done is I have taken and written down all of the important phone numbers and put that in that mobile go kit since that video. Uh, my line of thinking on that was I can't dial anybody's phone number without my cell phone available. Uh, I, okay, I could dial my wife, but that's the only phone number that I know off the top of my head. We all are guilty of just uh, picking up our phones and clicking on a contact and it dials the phone number. Nobody really knows a lot of phone numbers anymore. So should you lose your phone or your phone battery is dead, it's just something else that I found helpful to have in the vehicle. Now let's go over uh, the family communications plan that I put together. And guys, if you have any suggestions for me, leave it in the comments below. So one of the things you'll notice uh, right up at the top of mine is uh, it does say emergency communications plan dash vehicle. So this one is specific to the vehicles. I have another one that is modified uh, that stays at home uh, in our emergency communications kit there. So it, it, it's kind of different uh, depending on where you are when something happens. The next thing you'll see on mine is meeting locations. Uh, so the first one being home, uh, and then the next one uh, says Rob's house, which is just uh, across town, maybe 15 minutes. A lot of times we're dealing with tornadoes, so we could have a lot of devastation at home, and just two miles down the road, there everything be absolutely fine. Uh, depending on what you think might happen in your area, you might want to modify that a bit. Uh, the next one is the cabin, and that is in the adjacent town to us. The last one is my wife's brother's house, and that one is about an hour and a half south of us. So I wanted to give several meeting locations uh, that were further and further from our home uh, in case the natural disaster grew, um, or as it grew, we could move further and further out. You'll also see a note on there, go to the first place on the list, unless you can't access it, then go to the second. And we'll move right down the list until we can find a, a meeting place. Uh, but should communications completely break down uh, and nothing was working, we could at least know where we would find one another. Something else I wanted to address was how to use your cell phone. Uh, so predetermined times that you would listen to the cell phone. And I find it helpful to put a lot of notes in there uh, because in a, in a crisis situation, 
you may not be thinking extremely clearly. So I like to include a lot of notes. But I want to pre-plan how we use our phone and when we use our phone. Uh, it, you know, if your battery is full, then it's really not an issue. You can just leave it on all the time. Once that battery drops below 50%, if you don't have a way to charge it, you really want to start looking at conserving phone battery. Uh, so you'll note that I, I say to put it in airplane mode, except for at the top of the hour. Uh, this kind of conserves the battery because the phone is not sitting there constantly searching for a signal uh, to drain the phone battery down. And I want to include a out-of-town contact. Uh, one of the things we found during that tornado 10 years ago, we couldn't dial across town, but we could dial out of town. I'm not sure of the technology behind that and why that works that way, uh, but in that particular case, well, now in the very beginning, we couldn't dial anywhere. Uh, but after about six or eight hours, we could dial out of town um, and, and get a connection about 50% of the time. But if you tried to call somebody in town, it, it was not going through. There was no way possible. And the last thing you'll see on the list is the radio, uh, the ham radios. So again, I wanted to pre-plan uh, frequencies and times that we would use the radio. And there is not chargers uh, inside my mobile kits. There is only uh, two batteries. So you are limited on the time that you can utilize the radio. Uh, so I, I went ahead and pre-picked frequencies that we could use. And then I also include a radio schedule uh, in, in the plan as a way to try to conserve that limited battery supply that we have. All right, guys, I hope this gets uh, the gears turning in your head and kind of sends you looking uh, to maybe develop something similar if you haven't already. Hey, don't forget to click the thumbs up button before you head out and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.